Hello, Naxxers, and welcome to another video. Come along with me as we learn to reverse what we learned yesterday, uh, or whenever you did the first part of 4.1.6. So, in the first part of 4.1.6, I taught you, see if I can grab an example, how to take a graph and go to a rule. Today, we're going to reverse that process. I'm only going to give you a rule, and then I'm going to tell you to go to a graph without making a table. Now, if you need the table as a crutch, of course you can keep using it, but I will tell you it is just that. It is a crutch. And the longer you use it, uh, the more dependent you'll be on it. So if you can learn this way, I promise it's going to make high school super easy because you'll be able to graph like that. So we're going to do three graphs today. I'm going to show you how fast you can graph using this new method. So first things first, we need to make ourselves a graph. I'm just going to make tiny graphs. And I am going to count by ones. I'm still going to number, though. Like I said, you don't number. I don't know what you counted by. It could be twos, threes, fives, one hundreds for all I know. So please number. And remember, we need to number on our lines. I promise the more you do this, the faster this is going to get. As you can see, I'm pretty used to this. We're just going to number fast, fast, fast. Everything is a one. Okay, boom, graph has been made. So today we're going to start with, let's do the rule y equals 2x plus 1. And my computer is dying. Okay, when I plug in, can you tell me what is the growth of this equation? Next question, what is the beginning of this rule? Okay, hopefully you told me the beginning is one. So this is my growth. My growth is two, and my beginning is one. Okay, we're gonna use that to graph. And it's gonna be really fast. So, if my growth is two, that means that using the rise over run format, I should have two over one. Because we have to make it into a fraction. I need to have rise, and I need to have run. Let's see if we can refocus that. Okay. If you don't have a fraction, then we can't do this. So you need to create a fraction. And remember that anything that's a whole number can just be put over one, right? Because it's two cookies for one person. One person gets all two cookies. This and this are the exact same thing. So we're just expanding this. Two over one. If your growth is already a fraction, and we'll do one like that next, you don't need to do anything to it. You already have your fraction. Before you can do rise or run, though, you need to create a fraction. I'm going to use my tiny pen now to graph my dots. We found growth. We found beginning. You have to start with the beginning. I'm going to tell you this now. Do not try to start with the growth. It won't work. Start with the beginning. It's named beginning for a reason. My beginning is 1, which means I know that my line needs to intercept the y-axis, just like if I pull back an example here, right? We always find the beginning based off when my line collides with the y-axis. So I know that my beginning is where I have to cross the y-axis. So um, since I know my beginning is 1, I'm just going to put a dot at 1. Boom! I know it has to cross through 1, so we're going to start there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take my rise over run. My rise over run is 2 over 1. So I'm going to run 1, rise 2, and put a new dot. We're going to do that again. Run 1, rise 2, new dot. Run 1, rise 2, new dot. Now we can reverse that process. We will drop down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. 
and we did it. We graphed a line, guys. That's it. If I'm talking too fast, feel free to slow me down. We're going to do a couple more, so if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. Hopefully the next couple will. Connect the line, and we are done! That's it. And if we go take a look and check, which I would always recommend doing, my growth triangle here is run 1, rise 2. That's what I wanted. Rise 2 and a run of 1. And then my beginning, my y-intercept is at 1. So my b equals 1. And that, sorry, sorry it keeps unfocusing. And that means that my line's correct. So let's do another one. Scoot down to the rest of my paper. I'm gonna draw myself a nice quick little graph. Oop, make him a little bigger than last time just for kicks and giggles. Here is my graph. I'm just gonna count by ones again. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, and then up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then go down negative one. Please refocus camera. Oh well, negative two, negative three. Negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. Okay, so I'm numbered. I've numbered consistently. I'm counting by ones all the time. I have now labeled my axes, so the only thing that's left is to draw myself a nice pretty little line. Now well, let's go with green this time. So I am going to graph the line y equals... Let's do 2 over 3. x plus 1. Okay? So my growth is 2 over 3. Growth. So rise over run. My rise, according to my fraction, is 2. And my run is 3. This is why in the last video I told you please leave your growth as a fraction because it automatically gives you the rise over run. If you break it down into a decimal, then you have to refigure out what the fraction was. So don't do that. Leave it as a fraction. And then look, I know what my rise is and I know what my run is. Nice and simple. Draw an arrow. My beginning equals... One. I really like ones today, apparently. Okay. Actually, let's change that. Let's make this more interesting. Let's make this a three. There we go. Now it's more interesting. So, we start with my beginning, because it's the beginning. So we're going to start at three. So put a dot at three. It's where I know I have to pass through. And then, since my rise over run is two over three... We're going to start at 3, we're going to run, which is 3, rise, which is 2, and then put a new dot. So run 3, rise 2, dot. Run 3, rise 2, dot. We can reverse that, we're going to go down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. And then we connect all of our dots. And boom shakalaka, we got it. Done. That's it. So let's check it really fast. Okay, my run is 3 and my rise is 2. That's what I wanted. Rise 2, run 3. And then my y-intercept, or my beginning, is 3, which is what I wanted. Good job. Okay, I know this video is like 10 minutes long already. But I'm going to do one more example, so if you don't want to stick around for that, that's totally okay. I'm going to do an example of what do we do if we have a negative slope. So if you want to stick around for that, feel free. Uh, if you think you know what you're doing and you remember how to do negatives based off the last video, feel free to skip and move on. But for everybody else, we're going to do one more. 
We're going to really quickly label this graph. And I'm going to show you what happens when we have a negative, a negative growth. Because it does something a little bit different to our line. And it's very important because if you don't remember the negative growth, we have an issue. And don't worry, negative growth will come up in like every chapter from now on because that's all we're going to do. We're just going to do a whole bunch of lines. That is this year. Graphing. Graph, 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 graph. It's the main focus. Okay, let's make this one. We're going to use the rule y equals negative 4x. And let's do a negative 3. Now, this could be a plus 3. I'm making a negative 3 because I haven't shown you what to do when the beginning is negative either. So this is just going to be negative negatives. All the negatives. So first things first, my growth is equal to negative 4. Remember, if it's just a single number, I need to make it into a fraction. So I'm just going to put it over 1. That simple. So that means that my rise is negative 4 and my run is 1. And I'll explain what that negative 4 does to the rise in just a second. And then here's a really important part because every year somebody gets this wrong. And I forget how to spell beginning. <laughs> this right here, the beginning, is negative 3. Not 3, negative 3, right? If this was a tile pattern, it would start with negative 3 tiles. If it was a tree, it would start at negative 3 feet. If it was a table, it would be 0 equals negative 3. Okay? So, make sure you get that right. Not 3, negative 3. Grab the whole thing. So we're going to start at negative 3. So start at 0, go down to negative 3. Put a dot. Oh, you're so blurry. Hi. And then we're going to do our growth. So our growth is a rise of negative 4 and a run of 1. That negative 4, instead of going over 1, up 4, I'm going to go over 1, down 4. Because it's a negative. Okay? Over 1, down 4. And whoop, I have gone off my graph. This happens a lot with negatives, especially if they start, if the beginning is a negative. That's okay, we're just going to backtrack. So I go down one, I go over one, down four. So I'm going to go over one, up four to backtrack. They should all make one continuous line. Uh, if you did your dots and they started going that way, you made a V, which is not what we want. Not a thing. Not a thing until like calculus, so don't do it. Okay. Connect all your dots. And that's it. I want to show you something really fast. On this paper, both of my lines had a positive growth. And you'll notice that their lines go to the right. Start at the left, go to the right. Left to right and they're going up. So just like you would read a book, you always start from the left to right. So if it's going up, starting from here to here, then it's a positive growth. If looking from left to right, it is going down, it's a negative growth, okay? We'll explore that idea more uh, in chapter five, but for right now, if it's going down, it's a negative growth. Okay, remember that for me negative growth. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, the rest of this lesson, uh, you are just going to be doing this. Uh, it'll give you a couple lines, and you'll answer a couple questions about those lines, and you'll graph them. And that's it. If you need graph paper, please ask. Have a great day, everybody.